I don't know what's wrong with me. I don't know why these things keep happening. I don't know why they keep spreading to other people. I've tried so many times to build a team to try to understand. And regardless of the setbacks, progress was made, but the story continued to get stranger. I think it's about time I go in. I go deep. This is the audio logs for the curious case of Dakota Franson. I don't know if you're going to believe what I'm about to say. Quite frankly, I stopped caring a long time ago. And as we get into the story, you'll understand why. My name is Dakota Franklin. I am known as the Specialist of the Strange. This is episode two of The Curious Case of Dakota Franson. The first episode was meant to be an introduction. It did end up turning into a bit of a soapbox session, and I do apologize about that. So, today, as promised, I was going to start going into the backstory more establishing a timeline as I remember it now today is June 17th 2022 it's 540 a.m. mountain daylight time right now the only bits of background noise should be the birds tweeting outside, occasional bumps from maybe the ice machine in the kitchen running, and fans in the house. Just to note that for anybody who's listening for potential EVPs because I noticed in the uh, first recording there was quite a bit also you may occasionally hear me you know clink a bowl or start chewing on some food or have a drink it is Father's Day weekend and uh, quite frankly it's not really a day I care for mostly because uh well, I'll just put it like this. My father is in prison for the rest of his life for rather horrible crimes he committed against my sister, and that's the only rest because that's the only bit of stuff that the cops were able to prove. He was abusive to other people. And the only person that was like a dad to me passed away when I was 15, so. Though I guess I should be thankful I did have that person in my life. He helped me through a lot. Even with some of this strangeness, even though he didn't realize it at the time. For this session, excuse me, we must maybe bust out spirit box and CU5 tones for attempted communications. I'm uh, expected for a live later today at the time of this recording to discuss the travel program. And who knows, I may end up being part of it. Anyway. So as I said, Today, I want to establish a timeline, as I remember it, because 
This has been a journey of self-reflection, self-discovery. And I need to officially put all this stuff down on paper, or in this case on recording, so I can fully organize my thoughts. Because quite frankly, I don't know what to think right now. How should I begin this? I guess we'll start from the first known chronological incident. I have these memories from before I was born. I took me years to understand what they were, and perhaps I still don't understand them fully. I remember flashes of some kind of conflict. I remember a woman trying to encourage me to get through something, and I doing the same for her. I remember saying my goodbyes. I remember collapsing in front of a large group of people. And it seemed like it was heat. It was a heated conversation. Exactly what it was, I don't remember. I remember a part of me flying towards Earth. It moves so fast, I, I only knew, remember brief snippets. I remember seeing my grandparents get together, but they were still in high school long before I came about. I remember seeing my mom and my dad coming together. And the only reason that I figured out that this was the case was because years later I would come across some old family photos, one through my grandfather's, through a funeral video my mother put together for her, uh, my grandfather when he passed away. And just other old photos I happened to find while digging through old family junk, you know? And I remember hanging about my mother's stomach. I remember seeing things around the house. I grew up in a small town, Murtaugh, Idaho. It was uh, closely associated with old mining towns that used to be in the area, but uh, those shut down years ago. Murtaugh still there, it's just nowhere near as glorious as the people of Murtaugh seem to think. I note that town because oh, it's a crucial moment. I remember fragments of other incidents, but to be honest, I can't fully guarantee 
how much remains due to the fact that there was intense abuses going on at the time. Apparently when I was young, and it still pops up every now and then, to, even today, if uh, there was situations where I would be so stressed out by what was going on involving my father and the things he was doing, I would develop skin ulcers. And it got concerning to the point my mother almost had Child Protective Services called upon her because they would get irritated to the point they start looking like cigarette burns. The main thing they say to my mother was the fact that our doctor knew that my mother and I were both allergic to cigarettes. However, my father wasn't. All of this is important to the story. Fast forward, and, you know, just to kind of elaborate, there was an incident when I was about three years old where my stepmother stabbed me in the back of the neck with a pen and uh, then later dragged me into the kitchen, put a six inch butcher knife in my hand, and started daring me, challenging me to stab her. And eventually she grabbed a hold of my hand and made me jump her. The only reason it stopped before it got too severe was because I realized my younger sister, who doesn't seem to remember the incident, thank God she was too young, she saw me. So, just to kind of elaborate, there's probably a lot I'm blocking out, which makes this journey all that more dangerous, in a way. So, as I was saying, fast forward to when I was about five years old. I was living in a small town, well, not as small as Murtaugh, but I was living in uh, Drum, Idaho. It was just me and my mother. It was, uh, it was it in summer, it was during summer break between kindergarten and first grade. I, it was just a typical day at the house. My mother slept most of the day because uh, of her work schedule. I just kept to myself, play games, play my toys, I went to go to bed that night, then, uh, seemed like a normal night, as I'm talking about it right now, I feel like I'm literally hitting a wall, there's something here. I remember crawling into bed. All right. Elena, she recommended me advice to in order to start trying to dig up and more about these incidents. I'll try to retrace as much detail as possible. For those of you who are fans of the show Criminal Minds, when they start talking, regressing certain people through certain sets of memories to try to dig up more information about what happened in the, in the similar process what she recommended. I remember crawling into bed, kind of brushing aside one of my blankets. It was uh, kind of a wool Mickey Mouse powder, kind of itchy in the summertime. There was, uh, my bed started to creak. There's a little net on the side of the bed because uh, I had a tendency to 
roll around a lot in my sleep and fall out of bed a couple of times. There was an incident where my mother said that uh, she heard me roll around in bed, fall out of bed, and be, end up knocking the little net out from underneath my mattress. I hit my head to say ow, but fall asleep right out of the spot. And yes, I'll admit, before I go into the next part of the story, sleepwalking is an issue, but you need to remember the, the every single detail I'm going to share. I remember going to bed that night. I remember hearing something, kind of a electronic pulse sort of noise. And, uh, I look around, and at first, to, to try to figure out what was going on, but too tired to really register anything that was happening. And, the house was old. Kind of a dirt smell from the basement. House wasn't rarely clean. A lot of spiders in that place. One of the reasons why we ended up moving. You know, fire and noise. That electronic worrying. There was someone in the room. Oh, my God. There were grays. Four feet tall. They came for me. Let's say where oh I could hear them in my head. I swear it starts to black out. I remember being on this in this dark room. I feel like I'm hearing this voice trying to walk me through this. Saying that they blocked certain details. Trying not to freak me out, but they wanted me to remember that at least something happened that night. There was a man and a woman that came to me. They got me out of there. And I remember her. I remember them asking me if I, they could take me to my grandma's. I recognized the woman right away. The man. Why? The man, he looked familiar, but I didn't recognize him as much. But the woman I knew, I didn't know from where. She was young looking, kind of resembled the uh, 
main character of the Sailor Moon anime. Like if they were a real person and kept the anime eye portions. She talked me down. Said I was she was my wife. And that he came here to do something special. I asked them if they could take me to my grandma's. They should be sure. Because they knew I would feel safe there. The man was hesitant because he knew he would get in trouble. Not extremely, just... By all accounts, I'm not supposed to remember this. But... My grandmother's house is about thirty was about thirty miles away from the Jerome as the crow flies. And I remember going through the air and directing them to my grandma's. When I was a kid, I I recognized certain landmarks, and apparently would uh talk my grandma I mean not my grandma my mom in the directions to dropping me off at grandma's house which was a lot back then, which happened a lot because of her work schedule um, so I was pretty much raised by my grandparents but I don't really blame anybody involved there's uh you know there was a lot going on. My mother had me just out of high school, so it's not like she had much prep time for real life, you know? Anyway. So, I'm sorry, I had to pause recording for a little bit because I'm starting to get messages on my phone that I need to answer. Completely throwing me off, of course. But, as I was saying, that next morning, I actually didn't remember what happened at first. Because I stayed over at my grandparents a lot, I had my own bedroom there. And, uh,. You know, I had my own bed and had a old TV, Nintendo 64. I woke up. I had no clue how I got there. I came out of my bedroom. My grandparents didn't know I was there. So, which begs the question. How does a five-year-old manage to make a 30 mile trek over the course of say 8 hours nobody sees him nobody knows how he got in the house all the doors and windows are locked and his mother my mother calls my grandparents freaking out thinking that I got kidnapped I guess that's what I did and my grandparents just as confused were trying to tell her that no he's here we thought you dropped him off they kept asking me how I got in it's like I don't know I don't know My grandparents went grocery shopping. They went to uh, a store called Winka. And uh, we met up with my mom in the parking lot. There. It's kind of a halfway point 
between the two locations and even then my mother was trying to ask me how the hell it happened I honestly thought I could teleport and uh, there was a hypnotherapist who specializes in alien abduction regression therapy her name was Lori McDonald big in move on circles even she proposed that as a possibility but there's so much here that we got to be careful with you know don't want to accidentally meld and alter the memory but let's continue I don't recall many major incidents after the one I was with five years old. I do remember flashes. They came for me. And they just blocked it out. I just blocked it out for some reason. And they're telling me that uh, they do that because it's safer for both me and them because of the darker forces out there maybe I should start taking up a book on uh, alien species I know there's already quite a few out there Elena Dinaj, she put out one of the most helpful ones but something that helps me you know anyway Fast forward to when I was about 12 years old. We have the infamous Olivia Paradox, as I called it in my files. Situations at home, constant arguments with my mother, made it to where my grandparents suggested I came out to move with, I came to live with them for a little bit. Basically, we were arguing to the point where they feared that one of us was going to go off the deep end and it was going to end ugly. Perhaps they were right. But it didn't stop it. My mother had a tendency to blame me for everything. Got physically abusive quite a few times. Anytime I start acting like I'm getting ready to do retaliate, she would even try to throw the own line at me. Oh, just do it. Just fucking do it. Let's see who the cops will actually believe. You're bigger than me. I'm trying my best to forgive her, but there's a lot that went down that's a little hard to get over. Eventually, the point got to where I started thinking about killing myself because I felt like nobody loved me. I was constantly getting blamed for everything. Put at fault for even even if I wasn't a fucking around. I tried to kill myself by hanging myself in my bedroom closet at my grandparents' house. Because I knew they wouldn't come look for me. I wanted it to hurt. I wanted to leave, but I wanted to make sure they knew how much I was hurting. But then some stopped me. I uh, had a flash to where a vision or somewhere where it looked like I was floating in this vast blue void, unable to move anything except my eyes, really. All of a sudden, this man appears in front of me with this long, kind of sandy blonde hair, 
wearing what kind of looked like a white robe. All of a sudden, there's this, uh, he walks up to me and says, Dakota, there's someone here to see you. He steps aside, and there's this little girl behind him. And there's more. There was a woman there, too. I immediately noticed the girl. She looked just like me. She was just crying her eyes out. She runs up to me, gives me a big old hug. I'm starting to let me control my body. Seeing this girl in pain just gave me this pit in my stomach, you know? And uh, she looks at me and says, Daddy, please don't do it. Or giving me a kiss on the cheek and the, the vision ended. That little girl appeared several times throughout my life. And after there was an attack from a being known as the Hat Man while I was doing a YouTube live with my previous affiliations, she started to appear to other people more. And I was able to for create a photo of her then eventually reverse and reverse engineer quote unquote a photo of her mother and a month after that attack a photo of her baby brother I don't remember many incidents after that but one in particular took place a month after the Hatman attacks. We were still recovering. One girl ended up having to go to a mental institution for a situation that was unfolding on in her life. One guy who was dealing with on and off cancer treatments. So his cancer came back and both of them came to me saying that there was a little girl that was uh, appearing with them. The woman I mentioned, she knew the story. She would ask me if I, she was saying she thought she would see the little girl. And she also knew the name I used for her, which was Olivia. I described her to a T. Well, it was around this time. Olivia left an EVP during while they were doing a episode of their podcast saying mommy and having been on the hunt for this little girl for 13 years I thought it was a lead so I used an artificial intelligence program on my phone to merge our faces and sure enough I had a little bit of baby fat features you know make the eyes a bit bigger and give her a baby appearance it was an exact match out of what ended up being what's up to now 20 different people who have had visits from my daughter her brother and her mother besides me there were certain ones let's just say that uh it's a good thing they wore glasses, otherwise their eyes would have popped right out of their sockets from shock. A month after the Hatman attacks, I remember being taken into this, uh, I remember this one night where I appeared in the, what looked like a hospital room. And there was a woman and a little girl playing in Look like a hospital bed. The little girl realized I was there. Smiled and said, Daddy, come meet my new baby brother. I come look and the kid looked just like me. I tried to get a look at the mom, but her face was kind of blocked out at the time. 
then there was this window with a panoramic view, so to speak. I look outside, and it looked like the surface of Mars. I spoke with Elena about it, and she said there might be some sort of hybridization program I got involved with. Chances are my family's been involved with. The following day, I uh, happened to be on a video call with a psychic. She wanted to speak with me, just kind of BS about some stuff going on in the company we both worked for at the time. She did that a lot, especially when she found out that I was the same age as her son. She uh, started talking about saying, you had a visitation last night, didn't you? I was like, what do you mean? Something happened to you last night. You know the difference between spirit and aliens. Not a lot of people do, but you do. Then all of a sudden, there was a voice that came through. The video call. She didn't hear it, but I did. It came through on my end saying, Daddy, listen to her. That was my first hint that the reason I was having it was taking so long for me to try to find information as to who Olivia is, who her mother was, was because I wasn't looking up. Later on, the uh, AI generated images, I showed it to another medium, and she looked at me and said, well, Dakota, I can tell you that she's definitely Pleiadian. And uh, further on in the conversation, she revealed that apparently Pleiadians are very sexual. Fast forward a little bit more, I was brought, there was this couple, I believe out of Tennessee, who was looking for help in identifying UFOs. They told me about Elena Dinan's book, A Gift from the Stars. To which I ordered a copy, read through it, practically like a Bible. And apparently, Pleiadians, they are, according to her, Pleiadians are in fact sexual. And, uh, to put it simply, while they do have the technology for artificial birth, they have a strong preference for the uh, old school methods for sex. They prefer, they're big about physical intimacy, basically. Conversations and contact attempts pointed to where the particular Pleiadians, Olivia and her mother were, from, my kids and their mother were from, from where I surrounded the Halconi star system, if I'm not mistaken. There are planetary files, there are government files discussing a planet known as Fiona 2000 in that star system belonging to the Pleiadians. Now that particular sector, there's, the word is that uh, there was a bit of a civil war. Part of that group of Pleiadians joined the dark side, so to speak, and uh, my side, my family was part of the side that didn't want to, so we rebelled and join the Galact what is known as the Galactic Federation. Obviously, we're digging into the crazy side. But that's a brief summary of what I know so far. As I mentioned in the previous episode, I talked to Elena, finally ga gathering up the courage to go into detail about what I know, and she directed me to this training module that Tony Rodriguez put together, which will be the start I will be starting here soon and recording my venture. I do hope to honestly meet this guy. I want to see how much I can dig up. It seems like there's a bit of a rule. When you have contact situations like this, 
the beings that are assigned to you, chances are they're going to be related. So that way, you, you, there would be you would it would help make the transition smoother because you have this sense of familiarity with them. But they, there's only so much they can t- physically tell you. However, if you happen to figure something out on your own then ask for validation or clarification. They're more than happy to... They're more than able to talk. Which is where the CE5 protocols comes in. I may have to do an episode with that, too. But I guess we are kind of running long right now, so... Please do keep an eye out for episode 3. We're going to start the program. And see what happens. I have a feeling that this weekend may involve some more information. There's a lot more that I can put into this, but those are the main viewpoints I want to focus on as far as the extraterrestrial side. Because I can almost guarantee that there's exorcisms, it all ties every, just nearly everything or even from Bigfoot and Sasquatch may have some sort of E.T. involvement. I feel like I'm honestly going insane. Hurry up, Elon, with the fucking Neuralink chip so I can download my memories and look through them like video files. You know? <laughs> but anyway, stay safe. Much love, y'all. Let's see what happens when we go down this rabbit hole.